Welcome, everybody, to God's Final Jubilee program. I'm your host, Evangelist Dan Goodwin. It's wonderful to have you with us tonight. And uh, we, wanna, we want to uh, be a blessing to you this evening. We want to share real briefly with you uh, something that I call hell on earth. What are, what are we talking about? We're talking about Revelation chapter 9. If you've got a Bible handy, you may want to get your Bible and read along with us. We're going to read some very shocking and very sobering verses in the Word of God. Uh, I'm going to share with you something from my Revelation study guide that I wrote several years ago. Many of you have this. If you don't, go to the website, godsfindjubilee.com. You can uh, read about this on the website and uh, get your copy if you'd like. Um, but I want to I want to read you uh, uh, Revelation. My Revelation study guide. What I do is I give a I give a, a theme for each chapter of Revelation, and uh, I uh, I'm going to share with you Revelation chapter nine. But in the Revelation study guide, I start with Daniel nine, and then I go right into Revelation one. Uh, Revelation 2 and 3, Revelation 4, which, by the way, Revelation 4, the theme for that is the rapture. Revelation 5 is the seven-seal book titled Deed to Planet Earth. Uh, if you have not watched that video from last time, uh, be sure and uh, go to the, uh, on the YouTube channel there. The next one down is uh, the last video I did was on the seven-seal book. You need to watch that. Uh, very, very important that you understand what Revelation 5 is all about. That seven-sealed book, which is the title deed of the planet. So Revelation 1 starts out with a bit of an introduction uh, and shows us Christ and his relationship to his church. And uh, you turn the page, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, and you have the seven churches. And those are literal churches that existed in John's day. Uh, beginning with Ephesus and ending with the church in the, in Laodicea, the church of the Laodiceans, okay? And uh, I believe those are literal churches. I also believe that you can look at those figuratively. And I believe those churches in Revelation 2 and 3 are also prophetic of the entire 2,000-year age of the church, beginning in Jesus' day or in the Apostles' day with the church in Ephesus, and then ending prophetically with the Laodicean age, which is where we are right now. I have a lot of reasons why I believe that, but uh, that's for another, another session. Uh, I believe we're in that Laodicean age, and I believe the church is, is just about lifeless. And I believe uh, the, the Lord is knocking at the door, asking to come in, Revelation uh, uh, 2 and 3, there, uh, 320. And then you turn to page Revelation 4 and you read, of course, uh, the, the verse that we quote so often because I believe it's a rapture verse. Revelation 4 went after this. After what? After, the, after Revelation 2 and 3. After the seven uh, churches, after the 2,000 year church age, after this. I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. That, my friend, is the rapture. John, at least in his mind or in a vision, is raptured uh, to heaven. And uh, Revelation 4 talks about the throne and him that sits on it and the book in his right hand. Then you get to Revelation 5 and you see the book in the, in the right hand of the Father, he that sitteth on the throne. And we talked about that in the last video. And turn the page to Revelation 6. There's the beginning of the opening of the seals and the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ himself opening the seals. The first four seals are opened in the first few verses and the four horsemen arrive. Uh, you turn the page to 7 and 8 and then all the way to, I believe chapter 9 is right in the middle of the tribulation period. And I want to read a couple verses here. Uh, chapter 9, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star by the way, we're into the trumpet judgments in Revelation 9. We've already opened the seventh seal. We've opened all seven seals. Um, and, then, uh, and then remember there's the trumpet judgments and the three woes and all that. Um, so the fifth angel sounded. This is the fifth angel with the fifth trumpet. Okay, this is the trumpet judgments. Chapter 9, the fifth angel sounded. And I saw a star fall from heaven. Unto the earth, and to him was given a key of the bottomless pit. Now, what is this star that falls from heaven? A star in the book of Revelation falling from heaven 
is a type of a, uh, an angel, a fallen angel, one of the devil's angels. I happen to believe that Revelation 9 is right in the middle of the tribulation, and I believe the star that falls from heaven is Satan himself who still has access to God, still has access, and uh, still communicates with God. We see that in the book of Job. Uh, he has, he's not in hell yet. He's not been condemned to hell yet. Um, so Revelation 9 is, uh, of course, Revelation 8, chapter 13, uh, verse 13, right before you turn the page to Revelation 9, look what this says. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Now this is trumpet number five, six, and seven, which are, remember, there's seven seals. Then the seventh seal is the seven trumpets. The seventh trumpet is the seven, uh, the seven uh, vials, the the, the vials poured out on the earth, the wrath of God. And uh, so these last three trumpets are also called the three woes, all right? Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials. But the seven trumpets, the last three, five, six, and seven, are in fact the, uh, are called the three woes. Why is that? Because this is a terrible thing getting ready to happen. All right, you still with me? So right before chapter 9, in the last verse of chapter 8 is very important, verse 13. And he says, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. I call this the three woes. Um, these three woes are these last final three trumpets. And these are bad things coming upon the earth. Uh, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Trumpet number five, six, and seven. All right, you with me there? Um, and then chapter 9 gives us the fifth angel, which is the first woe, this fifth angel, the fifth trumpet judgment, the fifth angel sounds, and this is woe number one of the three woes. All right, the fifth angel sounds, and I saw, and a star falls from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So Satan, I believe this is Satan, but this happens right in the middle of the tribulation. This, uh, this is Matthew 24, by the way, the abomination of desolation. Uh, Matthew 24 takes place, uh, at least the abomination of desolation, takes place right at the middle of the tribulation. It's where the Antichrist enters the temple, declares he's God, defiles the temple, of course, and uh, becomes uh, Christ on earth, uh, the false Christ, all right? And is, and, and is accepted by the Jews, at least for a short time here. Uh, that very same time is when Satan loses access to heaven. No, uh, God shuts, the, shuts him out. That's when the Bible says he knoweth he had but a short time. You see that in Revelation 12. He knoweth he had but a short time. Let me read that for you. Revelation chapter 12. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can find that real quick. The woman fled in the wilderness. That's verse 6. All right, verse 7. There was war in heaven. Uh, verse 7, by the way, is right in the middle of the tribulation period. Uh, Revelation 12, 7. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more for them. And, and the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God uh, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, this is verse 10, which accused them before our God day and night. That's going on right now. And he overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony, and they loved not their lives. Um, let's see. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Why? Because Satan now is no longer in heaven. He's now been cast to the earth. The restrainer is completely gone. The Holy Spirit is gone from the earth. And the Satan and the Antichrist has full reign. So woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, right? And by the way, notice that word woe in chapter 12, verse 12. And then go back to Revelation 8, 13. Woe, woe, woe. Um, and then look in chapter 9, verse 1. Uh, and verse, uh, he opens the bottomless pit. Um, in verse Two there, he opens the bottomless pit and there rose a smoke out of the pit as a smoke of a great furnace. 
And uh, so, uh, but back in verse 13 of chapter 8, woe to them, the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of, of these, these, uh, these trumpet judgments. And then you see in Revelation 12, 12, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you. That's what happens in Revelation 9. Right at the middle of the tribulation, Satan is cast to his, 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 now his mobility has been cut off from heaven. He now has, has only can reign upon the earth. And look what it says here in chapter 12, verse 12. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. Great wrath. And we already has wrath, but now he's got great wrath. Look what it says. Because he knoweth that he hath but a, sh but a short time. How long does he have? Three and a half years, 1260 days. It's the middle of the tribulation. Um, all right, when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Who's the woman? The Jews, Israel. Who's the man child? The Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, um, all right, and so the woman are given two great uh, wings of a great eagle, and she flies away, and that's another story. But um, I believe the 144,000 get saved right here. And uh, you actually see that in Revelation chapter 9. I think it's verse 13 or somewhere in there. And uh, you see that the, the, the remnant gives glory to the God of heaven. I believe the 144,000 get saved right there. And, uh, and they run for their lives. And that's Matthew 24 again. Woe unto her who's with child in those days. Uh, why? Because it's hard to run when you're pregnant. Uh, if you're on the rooftop, don't even go in your house to get something. Run for your life. If you're out in the field, don't go back home. Run for your life. The Lord is, given, is, is expressing the, uh, the seriousness of, of what's taking place. When the Antichrist enters the temple, when Satan is cast out of heaven, it happens the same time. He, he knows he has but a short time. He's going to pour out his wrath on the earth. Uh, all right, so now back to Revelation 9. What is this wrath that Satan's going to unleash on the earth? It's right here in chapter 9. Look what it says. Um, the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven, Lucifer, Satan, unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. I believe the smoke of that pit is the devil's coming out. And there came out of the smoke a locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, and the, uh, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So everybody who is lost and everybody who is not sealed, like the 144,000 are sealed because God's foreknowledge knows that in a few moments here, uh, they're going to get saved. All right. To them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Now let me explain that. What he's saying here is these scorpions, which I believe are, are devils in, he, in, in, in the bottomless pit, they're released for a short time, for five months, actually, we'll see in a moment. And they're going to, they're going to torment men on the earth, unsaved men, for five months. Now look what it says. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion. Now notice the word as. That means it's symbolic. It's figurative. It didn't say these were uh, the torments of a scorpion, but like as a scorpion, okay? Uh, and I've never been stung by a scorpion, but I've been told that it's a very, very painful thing. Um, when he striketh a man, a scorpion, when he striketh a man. Verse 6, and in those days shall men look at this. In those days, those five months, uh, when, when hell is unleashed upon the earth from the bottomless pit, uh, it says, in those days shall men seek death. Men will try to commit suicide. Men will wish they were dead uh, and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Here's what I think that's saying. I think men will try to kill themselves because of the torment of hell upon the earth. Um, and men will jump off buildings to the pavement below and they'll, they'll lie there and they're still alive. Uh, men will, will shoot themselves with a gun and try to blow their brains out, yet they will still be alive. No, nobody dies for five months during this time. Now you think about that. That's why the theme of chapter 9, I call it hell on earth. And uh, because of this, because Satan is cast to the earth, 
Uh, he no longer can leave the earth. He knows he has but a short time. He knows this is it. He pours out his wrath. He has the key. The key is given him. He opens the bottomless pit, which, by the way, is, is kind of another dimension. You can't go to that pit if you wanted to. You, you couldn't go open it. And now it's possible that CERN, that thing in Switzerland, uh, it is believed by some that that's on top of that bottomless pit. I do not know if it is or not, um, but I'll tell you this much. Um, they're messing with something bad over there, but personally, I do not believe that that's going to be opened until the middle of the tribulation. But um, who knows, who knows uh, for sure about all that. Um, Verse 7, and the shapes of the locusts were like unto. Notice, like unto. That's figurativism. Verse 7, like unto horses prepared unto battle. He's not saying these are horses. He's saying they're like unto horses. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. They didn't have men's faces. They had faces like as a man's face. Now, this is pretty, pretty scary stuff. This is the makings of a Hollywood movie right here. Um, and their hair as the hair of a woman, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And this is all symbolic, as of. It says as of, like as. And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings were as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like under scorpions, and, uh, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. This is verse 10. Verse 11, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, and in the Greek tongue had his name Apollyon. Uh, I believe that's Satan, uh, the same one that was, uh, came down from heaven with the, with the key and opened the pit. Uh, now verse 12, one woe is past. Remember there's three woes we saw in Revelation 8, 13. Three woes, which are trumpet number five, trumpet number six, and trumpet number seven. Now, verse 12 gives you a little bit of a timeline. One woe is past, and behold, there come two more, two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded. This is the, uh, the second woe, the sixth trumpet. In verse 13, I heard a voice from the four horns. And, uh, but down in verse 15, I'm going to cut it off, cut it short here. A third of men will die during this, during these trump, during these three woes right here. A third of men on the earth that are left are going to die. Um, verse, verse 18, by these three, these three woes, these last three trumpets, was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths, out of these scorpions, these, I believe, these devils or demons, if you want to call them that. All right, now let me, let me stop reading right there and just give you a little, a little bit here that I wrote in the study guide here. I give, I give a little summary that I've already given you of, of Revelation up to Revelation 9. And uh, uh, Revelation 8, by the way, is called uh, uh, a pause in heaven. A, for a space of half an hour, there's silence. I, I think it's like halftime in a football game. And then chapter 9 begins the second half of the tribulation with hell on earth. All right. Uh, I call this chapter hell on earth because Satan is cast out of heaven, or at least his access to heaven is cut off. He's given the keys to the bottomless pit. Revelation 9.1, a star falls from heaven. He opens the bottomless pit. He releases the demons, the devils from the pit uh, to torment men for five months. This takes place at the fifth trumpet, which is the first woe. Uh, we see this in verses 1 through 12 of chapter 9. The torment will be so bad that men will try to end their lives, but, it but will not be able to. We see that these locusts, as, as they're called, have a king over them, and it is Satan himself, as seen in verse 11, as we read. Uh, verse 11 actually gives him the, his name in Greek and Hebrew. The sixth trumpet, the second woe, was opened in verses 13 through 21. We see that one-third of the population will die. And even after this, we didn't read it, but verses 20 and 21, even after all that, men still refuse to repent. You think about that. After all this, men still shake their fist at God. And about three years later, they're going to they're gonna assemble to, to, to try to uh, go to war and destroy the Christ. That's what the Battle of Armageddon is. It's the whole world coming together to fight against Christ. They haven't, they haven't, they haven't repented. Now, there will be some people who repent, but these, these boys didn't. All right? The, the, the Jews are going to get saved, 144,000. They're going to run for their lives. They're going to they're preach everywhere they go, and they're gonna, there'll be people saved of every kindred, tongue, and nation upon earth. And most of them will be martyred almost immediately. Uh, you want to get saved? Uh, now's the time to get saved, my friend. 
What a terrible time. Uh, you see, uh, uh, Satan, because he's kicked out of heaven, Revelation 12, 6 through 13, will realize he has but a short time. And so we'll release the demons from the pit, right, uh, you know, right, God's plan, really. And uh, he'll move Antichrist to enter the temple in Jerusalem and end the temple sacrifices, declare he's God. That's Matthew 24, 15, 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, Daniel 9, 27. Go look those up. That's the abomination of desolation. Those three passages all talk about the same event. Um, He'll break the peace tree with Israel. He'll kill the two prophets, leave their bodies in the street for three and a half days. After this, the two prophets arise, Moses and Elijah, by the way, ascend to heaven, uh, Revelation 11, and then the 144,000 get saved when they witness those two men going back to heaven. That's when the light comes on and they realize Christ was the Messiah. We understand now, and they'll get saved. They'll run for their lives, and the peace treaty is broken. All right, these are the first fruits, the first people saved during the tribulation, right at the middle. There's nobody saved the first half. In the Revelation study guide, back here, I have a page here somewhere. On page 81, it says, who can be saved and when? Uh, I, have, I have seven points here that I give, and I'm not going to read those to you. Uh, but I have, I have reasons why I believe nobody is saved the first half of the tribulation. And this is one of the reasons. These 144,000 are, are, are the first fruits unto God. That means they're the first people saved. And it happens right at the middle of the tribulation. All right. Uh, they're the first fruits. By the way, it's, uh, let's see, it's Revelation uh, 11, 13. I'm, I read the, I had the wrong one there. Revelation 11, verse 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, and a remnant, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past. There's your timeline. Revelation chapter 10, chapter 11, 11 verses uh, 13, 14, and 15 give you the timeline. The second woe just passed. Hey, that's Revelation 9, isn't it? That's right in the middle of the tribulation. That's when these, the remnant gives glory to the God of heaven. All right, the 144,000 get saved right at the middle of the tribulation, right, at, right there after uh, Satan is cast out of heaven and all the, what we've just been talking about, all right? So, just a couple lessons here. Number one, the star that fell in Revelation 9, 1 is Satan, right in the middle of the tribulation. When we read chapters 1 and 2 of Job, we see that Satan has access to God and is the accuser of the brethren, but that's going to change. All right, chapter number two, Satan is thrown out of heaven in the middle of the tribulation. That's Revelation 12, uh, 7 through 13. Uh, this leads, number three, to the increased wrath of Satan upon those on the earth and especially the Jews. I call it hell on earth. Um, Satan is given the key. Why does he hate the Jews so bad? Be because they brought Christ, the Messiah, into the world. That's why he hates the Jews. Um, so uh, Satan is given the key to the bottomless pit in Revelation 9.1 and leads these devils, these demons, on a rampage of the earth. Number four, the judgments get worse and worse as the tribulation unfolds. We saw the results caused by man in the first seals, the seven seals. That's man fighting man. When you get to the seven trumpets, it's Satan pouring out his wrath on the earth. When you get to the, to the seven vials of the wrath of God, I think that's chapter 15 and 16, uh, you see the wrath of God upon the earth. It gets worse and worse as it goes. And... Uh, Number five, it is the restraining power of the Holy Spirit in believers that now holds back the forces of the devil and his demons. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. And now, know, now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his times. The Holy Spirit in us that holds back the power of Satan to do what he would like to do. When the rapture happens, we're taken out of here and the powers of, of, of darkness will have more power especially at the middle when God kicks him out and he comes and unlocks the bottomless pit. Now he's got a lot of power, all right? And he, he tries to destroy the nation of Israel. All right, a couple, a couple of things here, personal application. Realize no matter how bad things get for you in this life, you don't have it as bad as what's coming. No matter how bad things are, you might have cancer today. You might have some illness. You, you might be going through a divorce or a breakup. You might have financial problems. No matter how bad things are for you, my friend, 
You ain't got it this bad and never will if you're saved. That's something to give glory and thanks to God about. Number two, have you ever considered that some people you love dearly, maybe a mother, a son, a daughter, a spouse, a friend, a neighbor, a grandparent, have you stopped to consider that people, some people you love dearly may be going to go through this terrible time unless you win them to Jesus Christ? My friend, don't put it off. We've got to win our loved ones. Is there some sin in your life that you have refused to repent of as those in Revelation 9.20, which we didn't read, where they refused to repent even after this terrible thing? My friend, is there something in your life that you refuse to repent of? We've just finished a very sobering chapter of the Bible, Revelation 9. Thank God for His saving grace. Aren't you glad you do not have to go through this terrible time? Take a moment and thank the Lord for it. And spend some time praying for and witnessing to your loved ones. You've been listening to God's Final Jubilee program. I'm your host, Evangelist Dan Goodwin. We've been looking at a chapter, Revelation chapter 9, in my Revelation study guide. You can see this and my other books and DVDs on the website, godsfinaljubilee.com. And uh, be sure and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you like what you see here, uh, we'll share it on your social media pages, Facebook and whatnot. Get the word out that uh, there's some teaching here and some preaching. And uh, uh, we're glad that you uh, spent some time with us here. And uh, we will see you again next time on the God's Found Jubilee program.